what about possession versus judgments? Uh, I, I may be saying it wrong, but I know the conversation often comes up uh, in our circles of like, you just want possession back. You're not looking for a money judgment. Talk to us about that and those conversations that you, that landlords need to be uh, having at this point or at some point during here. Okay. So landlords often tell me, give me that directive because they think it's going to make it faster. And that's not the case. You can only get a money judgment against a tenant if they have been personally served with the lawsuit documents. So if the tenant is served by the sheriff or the process server, you're going to get your money judgment along with your eviction or possession order. If you are unable to get service either of those ways, you can resort to what's called notice by posting. Sounds a lot like posting the notice. It's not. Because it's the lawsuit, the notice by posting is a document that the clerk issues and the sheriff mails it to the tenant and posts it in the clerk's office or in the courthouse. There's this like arcane idea that every citizen is going to walk through the courthouse once per day and check notifications. <laughs> and, and we're still and we're still going as if that's the case. Um, so that's what the posting is. The sheriff is actually posting a notification that this lawsuit is on file against the tenant. If we go that route, we just get the possession order and you're not allowed to get a money judgment that's like attached to the tenant, right? Because we didn't get personal service. So I have clients say, don't do that whole service thing. We'll just do posting because we want to get just possession. We don't care about the money. This tenant isn't collectible. Just push it through and just get possession. It doesn't matter because the judges require attempts at personal service, especially in Cook County. Um, in the collar counties, we might be able to expedite it a little bit. But in Cook County, the judges will require one round of service by the sheriff. They will require a second round of service by the process server. Some judges even require a third round of service by a process server to try to get these tenants personally served but for the judge will even authorize notice by posting, um, which would result in that possession judgment. So that's the difference. That's kind of the process. But I just want to warn everybody, just saying, hey, possession only doesn't actually make it faster. Yeah, we'll, we'll come back to the the judgment part uh, at the end there. Um, as far as. Uh, so next steps to get to that final court date, you've gotten some uh, attorney fees along the way for your your five uh, court dates, but now you have to file with the sheriff to uh, yep. actually enter the eviction order. And there's an additional fee there, correct? Yes, yes. Um, sheriff's fees. So you have to get a certified copy of the order. I think that's only like $12. And then the sheriff's fee, it seems like it's not going to be too much. I think it's like around 60 bucks, I think, to file it with them. But then... If they are there more than, I can't even remember what it is, an hour, I think it is, then you will get a second invoice for their time. Um, so it seems like it's not too much, but there is a, de a definitely another um, fee coming down the road. But all in all, you're going to be somewhere probably 150, 200 bucks for them to actually perform the eviction um, as long as they're not there for hours and hours. Um, 